What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at a real cool one from Shirogorov. This is an RJ Martin Soft Overkill collaboration in uh, the, I believe they're calling it Black Micarta, uh, with an M398 blade. Pretty cool one that's kind of come through. This one is available on the website currently. And uh, I just wanted to do a quick video on it, show the knife, talk about it. And uh, more than anything, have a have a cup of coffee with you, or a beer or whatever, and uh, go over the knife, do a couple comparisons, and, uh, you know, see if it's something you guys like. If it's not something you like, all good. Um, if it is, great. Um, it's certainly a pretty sick one. So I've got a couple comparisons here as well that are uh, beside it, so it's, uh, it's a really good one to kind of look at today. Um, so anyway, let's get started. A quick reminder of the website that I, uh, I run here is bladezilla.ca. Uh, just changed the banner. Hopefully you guys think that's pretty sick. And uh, apparently a seller, a seller just sold. Awesome. Uh, lots available in Canada. Everything here is priced in Canadian. You can also switch it to US dollars on the bottom. Uh, follow me on Instagram. There's a bunch of stuff down there on Instagram and YouTube, as you guys obviously know. But website, bladezilla.ca. Nice little shout out, but let's be honest, we're not here to talk about a website, we're here to look at a super sick knife in this configuration. So let's get started. I got my tape measure here, and we'll get some measurements, and we'll do some comparisons, and we'll have some fun with this, as, as we always do. So let's get going here. So uh, overall length of this guy is uh, about eight and three quarters, which is a little bit longer than an F95, I think, but you could probably argue it's eight and seven eighths, depending on how accurate your tape measure is. Blade length is about four inches, I'd say, but overall, yeah, a little bit under three and three quarters, four to the center of the choil, something kind of like that. I'm kind of looking at the uh, screen and I've got a big tripod in my face. Which is, uh, which is awesome. Weight-wise, I'm going to get a weight on this today. Because why not? I seem to always forget doing this uh, for some reason. And uh, I've got a scale right here. So I may as well just quickly do that. And uh, any guesses? Four and a half? Five? Something like that. Let's take a peek. Four, eight. Four nine, four eight, somewhere in there, and for my Canadian homies, 137 G's grams. If you don't know, so there we go. So I, I don't want to rush this uh, this review today. I've got uh, I've got a lot on my plate today, so I don't uh, I don't know how quick this one's going to go. But uh, you know, often they're pretty open ended, and I can kind of shoot for a few hours if needed. But um, this one I'm going to try to kind of go as a little shorter if possible just because I've got lots to do here, uh, which is pretty common now in January for me. Um, comparison wise, I know I've done, well, let me do it like this. I know I've done other videos on these other two and, and this one has made an appearance in the others, but we've got the Maroon Micarta, RJ Martin Soft Overkill. We have the green canvas micarta as well. So these are kind of your three soft overkills that they've done. Now they're all numbered individually. They all have M398 steel, I think, if I remember correctly. And they probably all say it actually right here. Hopefully you can see that, M398. I just want to double check that because I thought... Sometimes I go crazy, maybe one's S90V or something, but uh, I'm 398. And it kind of acts as a confirmation that I'm not crazy. M398, so M M398, all the way around. So they're essentially all the same knife. And if somebody does want to confirm that with me, because I often ask myself, has there been any subtle differences? I have not opened up any of these. And sometimes with production, depending on which color came first, they might make very slight alterations to the knife. And in this case, I don't think they did, but you never know. But those are kind of the three colors, and just in case we want a little close-up, you're going to be seeing a lot of this one today. You can see the rolling on the micarta there, which is awesome. 
but uh, it's always nice to kind of see a quick comparison on how they all look up close. In case you are interested in tracking one of these other ones down at some point, you know, it's always great to see the colors as online photos just never seem to do them justice. They're always just slightly different. This one feels a lot different than the other two in hand as well. A little uh, thicker, I think I'd say, on the texture. More coarse. Really cool knife. These two very, very similar in hand. Um, and also, the other thing is not, it's not just the scales. They actually have, I believe, matching back spacers as well. So if I go to the green, you can kind of see You've kind of got some pivot hardware there that's got a blue color to it. You've got the backspacer that's blue, and you've got the clip that's blue, right? So green and blue, but that pivot color is matched as well. On the maroon micarta, same thing. You've kind of got this kind of purple anno-ish thing going on here with the purple backspacer, which matches the color really, really nice, and then the clip. So you've got purple on maroon, which is awesome. You've got green on blue, and then you've got black on blue. So this one has a little bit different uh, look to it, right? So it pops a little more in the, in the pivot collar, in that you have that blue anno in there, and then the blue backspacer, and then the blue clip. So the true to color one, I guess, would be the maroon micarta, and then the other ones have kind of got this blue vibe going on, and they are a different blue. If anyone wants to see the difference between the two, they are slightly different. It's probably easier to show that way. Uh, if it wants to focus, come on, man. There we go. A little bit different between them. But those would be the comparables. Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. So I'm going to put these two away. I think they've uh, made enough of a guest appearance. Um, as well, I will show some other RJ Martin ones. So I've got the uh, Russian Overkill here. This is mine. Um, very similar design, a little thinner, right, but still blue on blue with the collar. Um, more just full tie, right, and it's also M398, I believe, in a different spot. There you go. Frame lock versus liner lock as well. Um, R my RQ36, so one of you guys nabbed, so I no longer have that. I am looking for another one. Um, denim overkill, those are all in the safe. Um, so the denims are all brand new. I'm not going to open those. And then um, the the molten as well is out with somebody as well. So yeah, I am, this is kind of it for the RJ Martin collabs. Holy smokes, I should have probably thought about this and brought a couple more out, but it is what it is. If you do want to check the green micarta video on the uh, on the soft overkill, I think I have the RQ at that time. I've got the molten. I don't know if I the denims had arrived quite yet when I was filming that. But um, anyway, the main one everyone wants to see for some reason is this, the Russian Overkill, which I still have yet to do a video on, which is crazy. Uh, there's just too many knives, not enough time. In terms of Shirogorov comparables, what do we want to see? I'll put this at the top. Um, let's do my normal kind of routine, our F95s. There we go. Uh, in the form of a Silk Slim. We've got our Neon. Actually, you know what? Why don't we do a Stellar? Stellar's a little bit uh, smaller than the F95, and then we'll do our Neon. Or let's do our Hattion. There's our Hattie. Hattion. Try not to contact these, but there's kind of your, their, your sheer growth size. And remember, the angle of the camera changes the appearance a little bit of how these look. But for the most part, you kind of get the idea, and I could swap in the Neon, it doesn't really matter, versus the Hadion, it's the same same knife, just different, uh, different weight to it, I guess. Different feel, less of them. Um, these Stellar Touches are also super sick. Um, at the time of filming this, um, I, I had a few of them available, but... Uh, my god, super cool knife. This has become one of my favorites. Um, as well as the production Stellars. A big batch of those just whirled through in uh, no time. And actually, you know what? Because I have one, I may as well show this knife. I don't think I've shown a ton of this one on the channel. 
but um, I will show the Astrum just from a comparisons point of view in that there's not much content on this knife quite out there yet and it's always nice to show the size and how it is a lot slicker than an F95 uh, and people don't really know that yet you know it's got a big blade a huge blade that fits inside the handle here but in terms of it fitting uh, or comparatively you know compared to an F95 it's quite a bit thinner in uh, profile so they look and they go oh it's a bigger blade everyone thinks it's the one uh, 110 kickstop and um, no it is not it's like a big neon it's pretty cool it's probably my favorite knife um, I've ever owned to be honest and I've done a whole video on this in the past but uh, there's just not many of them out there right now this is the Astrum Sprint Run and uh, this is currently in my collection as probably the last knife I'd ever sell and that says a lot because I uh, I've got a lot of them and it's probably my favorite and not just from a rarity perspective I know they're all rare in their own regard but it's just uh, one of those cool knives that uh, doesn't seem to come around very often obviously but it's just the profile is awesome and then we're going to do a couple other comparisons here as well we've got our bio or Sinkovich bio also a little thinner um, in terms of collaboration pieces we can do our Tom Mayo Dr. Death Shergroff collab which you can see is nicely covered in fingerprints that's just uh, that's just me sometimes I sit here and flick some of these things there you go so there's another collaboration that's a nice little uh, nice little picture actually of three different makers that's cool Tom Mayo on the bottom, uh, Dmitry Sinkovich in the middle, and then R.J. Martin. You don't usually get the, the bundle like that all together. Um, but it, it kind of goes with the, the whole theme of the collaboration, so Ollie will definitely allow it. Uh, and then we've got one more here. Where is my Kami hiding? Uh, another Sinkovich collab, but I uh, figure I can show that one as well. Really cool blade. Cool grind S110V, which is rare, and then the grind itself, uh, I think I've done a video on this knife, uh, itself is asymmetric. So look at that grind, and how I rotate the knife around. Note the big bevel on there, if it wants to focus. There we go, and then as I flip the side around, whoop, it's gone. Super sick knife. Um, these are going to be, I think this might be one of those knives that's going to be hard to find at some point here. Just because it's so cool. So sick. Um, and then what else do we got in terms of others? That would be a nice little comparable that we want to look at to the RJs. Well, I have an authentic RJ Martin. That is not coming out currently. It is also locked up. Uh, we could probably do the Grimsmo. That's beside me. There's a Rask for size. We could do our Sebenza 20, no, 31. Sebenza 31, or large. There's a nice little comparison as well. And do we have a Rosie anywhere? Uh, there's a Rosie. And our tried and true a Rosie. That is a cool knife as well. And then maybe some comparisons that we don't see every day. Why don't we do a couple other ones here? There's your Peter Rosenti Nirvana. And uh, my Pyrenees made down the road, which I still have. Did a video on that knife as, as well. Super cool knife. But uh, yes, there are knives in my collection other than Sheer Goroff. I know I'm an absolute Sheer Goroff slut, and I admit it. But uh, I do like others as well. So there you go. I think that is a nice little comparison for a couple other brands. And. Uh, Let's get started on this. So in hand, fits phenomenal. Jimping up on the blade here is nice and thick. The jimping kind of goes back to a reverse, I don't know what you'd call that, reverse inlaid jimping or something, which is nice. The jimping itself is also mirrored on the backspacer, kind of same similar pattern. So in your palm, that's what it's designed to hold. Uh, nice and grippy. It's, it's an RJ Martin, so it fits your palm, fits your hand really, really nicely. Ergonomics are terrific. 
we go down the blade itself, it's flat and rounded, and then it kind of pinches in at the tip, but you can go down this and uh, go pretty much anywhere on it that you want to utilize for small cuts. We've got the Shirogorov logo on the side here, and then I think RJ on the other side, RJM, there you go, which is cool. They've kind of got some satin polished, or satin flats on it, as well as a mirror polished edge. And hopefully you can see that camera kind of struggles with that but uh, it's it's definitely a polished edge which is cool uh, it's not nearly as mirror polished as uh, I guess it could be but in terms of a factory made knife it is damn good for what it is and then just kind of a nice flat grind that's uh, the RJ Martin influence it runs on roller bearings which it has to be one of the smoothest um, roller bearing knives I own and that's I think due in part because the blade itself is really heavy and thick so it's nice and controlled um, for new Shiro Goroff guys you know Shiro does single row bearing for uh, single row ball ball bearings which would be found on a knife like my monkey edge quantum so this guy's single row bearings and it's actually written on the inside here. There's, there's a little pattern they use on a lot of their knives. They mark it for what it is. But uh, this is, would be like your standard ball bearing. Circles in a track. And action on this. I'm just going to move this up just so I don't bump it. Action on this is terrific. Um, for the price point, this is a full production knife. And that's a single roll bearing. Okay. From there, we go up into multi-row bearings which is kind of three of those same balls in a, in, a, in a line and kind of a pinwheel pattern okay so it adds stability from a side to side play perspective and that would be found on like this hattie here and it'll say on the inside here mrbs i don't know if you see that or not i don't know which that would be on the tie side but it'll say it inside here somewhere uh, right inside there actually MRBS, multi-row bearing system, and it's just, they float home, they all float home. Uh, I find them a little, uh, a little floatier, a little less drop shuddy than the single row bearing, but you can tune them all to how you like. Uh, so there's one example there, this guy's heavily used, CCKS edition, and uh, this one's even firmer. So you can kind of see a couple variants, but multi-row bearings on that. And then we go into roller bearings, and that's where you get these special edition, these collaboration pieces, where they're like hot dogs, or they're needle, they're, they are needle bearings, right? So they are, think of them as hot dogs on a, on a track in a circle. And then from there, they go into full customs, and they do double row roller bearings, which is cut those roller bearings in half, and put them in different patterns that are kind of unique. And um, essentially, once you feel one of those, your entire life is ruined and uh, you'll remortgage your house, you'll sell your car, you'll sell yourself just to experience the smoothness that uh, double row roller bearings brings. But for those who are unwilling to sacrifice themselves to that standard, uh, they make the roller bearing versions which are already so exceptional and smooth that uh, maybe you'll just do partial amounts of those things to have in your life. Um, all jokes aside, it feels unbelievable. Their custom division knives are all on rollers, with few exceptions. And they're terrific. Like, roller bearings, once you experience them, you'll be like, yep, never going back. Not that multi-row bearing or single row bearings are bad, it's just they're that good. Um, that's probably the easiest way to state that. So they are very smooth. RJ Martin has a very specific feel to their release on their detent as well so with this knife you'll be able to flex a strong detent and you can see that in my hand uh how do i do this it's kind of hard to do with the camera there so super unnatural position but i'm pushing on the flipper tab and you can see the blade moving around and this is essentially to tune the release and how much force you have to put into the detent to break it which will open the knife fully so i'm going to try to fail this okay to the lightest break that I can, and it's like fires out. Let's do it one more time. So 
that means like in basically any position, upside down, sideways, right side up, um, it will fully fire out, or it should. And it's got a nice crisp feel to it as well. That is unlike uh, a lot of the other detents that some of the other brands have. So that's kind of the RJ Martin feel. And I was joking with a guy recently, he said, you know, I think Sheer Goroff makes a better RJ Martin than RJ Martin. And that's a little exaggerated, obviously, because, you know, this is, you know, a $2,000 US knife, and an RJ Martin is three, four, five grand, six grand, depending. Um, so two different leagues, hand handmade versus machine assisted, etc. And volume versus not. Anyway, uh, but it was an interesting take. It was a hot take. If we look on the inside of this, the tie sides uh, are the, on the inlays are all kind of uh, milled out for skeletonization, bringing the weight down to four point whatever I said, four point eight I think it was. So it doesn't feel uh, it doesn't feel very heavy in hand. It feels solid. It feels very solid. Tolerances between the micarta and the titanium are incredible. And then a nice little treat on the inside there is you can actually see uh, underneath the back spacer um, some millwork for the blade to center into. So, you know, when I closed this earlier, you can kind of see how they exaggerate the centering on this. Like, they don't have to be this centered, but hey, if we're going to be centered, let's make it so we cannot be anything but centered. So underneath the back spacer, they, they add that I don't know what you'd call it, like centering highlighting channel um, to make sure that it's just so centered and ridiculous. It's You don't have to do that, but Sheer Groff does a lot of details they don't have to do, which is hilarious, but it's just so well made. And you can kind of even see the same thing up uh, at the top here in the middle of the handle. You have that same little channel cut out underneath for the blade to go into, as well as in the back there. So cool. And then if I sh shine some light underneath, you can actually see some tolerances and some gaps, which is, uh, I guess, their floating side of things. See what I'm saying? How sick is that? It's just such a well-made knife. This is why I will never have a new car. Um, as well, the clip. So I talked earlier about how it's color matched to the backspacer and the, and the colors. Uh, just a solid, well-made pivot. Just really, really, or sorry, uh, clip, well made. I think this one's angled off to the edge, which they kind of do normally. So it's leaning on one side. You don't have to worry too much about that because it's not a frame lock, but that's just what they do. And then let's take one more look a peek here. On the actual locking mechanism, it is raised. So if I roll the knife here, you can see where you engage and disengage the lock. It is elevated, so your finger finds that nice bevel super, super easily. And inside you can see the detent ball lock up pretty light as well, pretty standard. For sure, Goroff. Just a solid, well made knife. I love the flipper tab, like RJs have huge flipper tabs, that's what she said. And I love the feel of how locked in you are right here. Um, it's just monstrous. That is also what she said. Um, it's just a solid feel. And then the RJ handle is just a nice smooth profile. No no rack and a, you know cut or anything like that. It's just solid. You know, wear it with gloves, without gloves, you're gonna have the same feel in hand. Your fingers aren't gonna spread between a channel. Uh, and if I show like a, oh, what knife would show that well? Da -da 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 -da. Let's do like a quantum. So Quantum, see what I'm saying, the profile, whereas that one is a nice smooth roll. This one has a little edge that sticks up, so sometimes you can find, depending on how big your hand is, you'll want this between a finger, and sometimes it's not ideal, but that's, uh, that's what I'm talking about. There you go. Uh, what else can I talk about on this guy? So I talked about the backspacer mirroring kind of the, the jimping on the blade how it matches the clip, how it's got a huge... Oh, um, actually, one thing on these is they do not have any uh, any jimping on top of the flipper tab. There's no grab to it. Uh, it is smooth and concave ever so slightly. I don't know how well you're going to see that. But uh, it is. it does stick up. It does kind of stick down, though, in terms of the roll of the knife and how you can kind of see it's not as crazy as you'd think. But, yeah, no... 
no milling into that, no grip. It's just nice and smooth and rounded, which is kind of uh, interesting, but it's found on all of them. Now, in terms of negatives of this knife, well, there's only uh, so many of them made, and they are stamped internally right on the tip here, and I can't actually see, and I didn't read what it was prior, but maybe in 4K you can kind of see what number this one is. I thought it was 22, or 174, 173. So number 173, um, whoever uh, whoever ends up with this nice knife will have a video on bladezilla.ca of uh, number 173, which is cool. Um, and then uh, one more thing here, so I guess negatives, other than there's limited editions of them, or limited quantity available. There's, people always talk about this gap on the backspacer. So first of all, the backspacer comes up more than half the length of the knife, which is perfect, in my opinion, for proportions and ratios. I love that. But the gap right here is why don't they fill that? Why doesn't this make it all the way? And I can't answer that question, but I'm telling you, there's probably a good reason for it that I don't know. You know, I say a lot of things on this channel. Yeah, some of them are true, some of them aren't. Some of them I believe are true. Um, I have no clue why that is that way. But if someone wants to chime in and say, I would love to know. The lanyard hole is also uh, a nice solid through um, design, which is in line with RJ. And I often say this with my Stellars, you know, it's got a hole in it. Some people, for the lanyard, some people love that, some people hate it. It's a bit of an eyesore. On some of the other sheer grow-offs, they're kind of going into the, um, you know, let's put the lanyard hole as part of the backspacer, so from the side, there's no eyesore. But from the top, you know, you still have a functional place if it wants to focus to, to utilize on that backspacer to put your lanyard through. So, you know, I could see that being an argument. I've also seen some images of the knife uh, at certain angles where people think it's missing hardware. I want to say it's like this angle from like a down low. We're getting artsy now, like an angle like that, where all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's missing a screw back there. So I've, I've seen that from people, which is fine. Um, that's about it. Otherwise, everything's milled really, really well. There's all this contouring around the micarta, which is just insane. And from when you take this outside and get natural light on it, you'll see the like rolls in the micarta. It's just constantly changing and evolving as you kind of move it around. It's all smooth and like even if you look at it down there, it's, they mill it. Like it's it's just so well done. Um, they do have uh, the reverse bit on this knife as well uh, to take it apart. And the reverse bit, think of it as a, like a flathead screwdriver but reversed, right? Um, you can use the shear go off tool obviously on this side. Please don't use a screwdriver because you'll mar it up. Uh, this one will be a little more of a challenge to get, but uh, they are there are some other options available out there. I've seen people use like a brass center punch and then they kind of use like a gr an angle grinder or a Dremel to put a little channel in it to make that work. And brass is good because you're going to damage the brass far before you do anything to that, which I believe the hardware on these are titanium. But overall, really, really well done example of a knife that, uh, you know, it's it's typically, for a lot of people, the entryway, the soft overkills, because A, there's a lot of them, and, and B, the price point is lower than some of the other collaboration pieces, um, into roller bearings. I know that uh, the first ever roller bearing knife I got was, a, that, was that Russian overkill there. And then... Um, it was an immediate downward spiral following that uh, into my personal finances. No big deal. Um, after experiencing roller bearings, and you know these ones, you can get some some users pop up every now and then for one four, one five, one six US. Um, but a mint example like this, yeah, you're you know pretty pretty common two thousand ish US. Currently filming this early twenty twenty four. So uh, I don't know when this one's going to hit the website, but um, they're always, they always seem to be timed <laughs> a little off, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so that is the uh, Soft Overkill in black from uh, Sure Goroff, RJ Martin collaboration. I talked about the knife, talked about the action, some of the uh, profile to it. 
the blade steel, the fit in hand. I think I've kind of covered everything off. Uh, the only thing missing, I guess, at this point is, uh, you know, if you want one, um, you know, it's a great knife, highly recommended. It's, uh, it's a nice entry level price point to their roller bearing series and collections and it's a great knife it's uh it's just a great way to experience two brands in one being rj martin and chevroa so there you go appreciate you guys stopping by and checking this stuff out any questions leave them below otherwise like subscribe share all that good stuff check out the website bladezilla.ca and uh, until next time we'll catch you around okay guys see ya peace